Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome. I'm Libby. If you don't know me already, I have just graduated law school. I went to Exeter University and I'm here to answer all of your questions because I've been bringing you guys along for the past couple of years and I thought now would be a good time, especially since we're coming into the new academic year. So I popped a question box on my Instagram story and I have gathered some questions to answer for you guys and yes, let's get straight into it. So the first question that I've been asked is about the pros and cons of a law degree. I would say that the pros are that it's a challenging degree, it's really really interesting and everything is so applicable to everyday life and it really sort of develops your analytical thinking skills that can apply again to everything and I feel like doing a law degree is a good degree to have behind you regardless of what career you decide to go into. And then I would say the cons are that it's challenging, I would say it's equally a con, um, it requires quite a few hours, quite a lot of understanding. The next question is were you ever afraid to fail a subject and have it on your record? The answer is probably yes, I have a huge fear of failure but I feel like that's a huge motivating factor in me it's probably not a good thing but yes I feel like I definitely have a big fear of failure but at the same time it's not the end of the world and I don't think that that's something you need to worry about sort of having it on your record that you've like failed a topic or not done well in a certain module. I got 2-2 in EU law in second year and I was absolutely gutted. I got 58 in the essay that was 100% of the mark and it did get brought up in one of my interviews and obviously you do put your module marks on your CV when you're applying for vacation schemes, training contracts, whatever you're applying for and I did get asked about it in one of my interviews but as long as you can explain it, say what you learned from it, how you've taken the feedback on board and all of those things, I don't think you need to worry about having it sort of marked against your name because it didn't stop me from getting magic circle vacation schemes. So the next one is what is your organisation? studying law. So I've spoken about this a lot but I always have a weekly or master to-do list that I do at the beginning of the week with all of the tasks that I need to get done in the week or in the near future and then daily I will look at the weekly to-do list and I will often have dated things and I will make a daily to-do list from that depending on what my priorities are, what needs to be done the soonest. The next question is similar but it asks how I balance my time and I think for me having working hours was a really big part of this. I didn't do this in first year because I didn't have as much on and a much lesser workload in first year but in second and third year I would work working hours nine till five I think in second year because I had so many applications and things to do and YouTube and all my extra roles that I was doing I did usually work on the weekends but that did lead to a lot of burnout but I think I just had a huge workload when I was going through the application cycle and things like that in second year but in third year I would work a working week so like nine till five nine till six on uni work and sometimes other bits of work and then I would edit YouTube videos in the evenings or on the weekends, but I would always have weekends completely off of uni work. And that was so, so helpful for my mental health in third year and just keeping myself motivated and in a routine. I think taking weekends off of uni work was so so important for that for me. And then leading on from that I've got a question about how I motivate myself to study. That's a combination of the fact that I have set working hours, I have weekly and daily to-do lists so I have visibility of all the tasks that I need so I don't feel too overwhelmed or not really know what I need to get done. And yes being very organised with everything, knowing when I'm going to get everything done and all of those sorts of things. But then I think it's also really important to have flexibility to go to the gym, like do whatever sport you want to do, go out on a Wednesday night, go out for a walk if someone asked to, all of these sorts of things. I wasn't completely set in my ways. I was more than happy to work around social plans, holidays, things I wanted to do. But I think having the routines, having the working hours, having the habits really helped me be disciplined when the motivation wasn't necessarily there. Next question is, is it worth living away from home? What are the pros and cons? And I'd say for me, yes, it definitely was worth living away from home. I don't think I loved first year, like I didn't love living in halls. I had the room next to the stairs and I used to get woken up all night because the lift was always broken. So people would like be going up and down the stairs. But in second and third year, we had our house and I absolutely love the freedom of living on my own and living with friends is so much fun. I also love that you're never more than sort of like a five, 10 minute walk away from your closest friends. Um, I think I'm really, really gonna miss that. And it's just nice living in a city next to all of your closest friends. And I think the cons probably are that the kitchen is always gonna be gross. The communal areas are probably always gonna be a little bit gross unless you live in a really small household. 
there were seven of us. I have a few questions asking about advice for securing a training contract or a vacation scheme. I think in a nutshell, my main advice would be to start your applications early and make your applications really specific to each firm after doing a lot of research on each firm. And another great place to go for all things commercial law applications is Mindful Learning, who I am actually working with on today's video. Mindful Learning have produced some extremely detailed commercial law study guides. So the commercial law applications guide is specifically designed to help with vacation schemes, training contracts, paralegal positions. They have contributions from over 160 legal professionals and the ebook with 140 plus pages includes a detailed chapter on how to approach writing cover letters, a step-by-step -step cover letter template, an exemplar CV and CV builder, and over 35 successful answers and cover letters from successful applications to over 30 different international law firms. And they also have a commercial law interviews and assessment center study guide, which includes how to prepare for an assessment and how to effectively research a firm, over 80 interview questions with exemplar responses, how to approach case studies and financial statements with examples, how to approach presentations and group tasks, and also some end of interview questions to ask. They also have a commercial law firm profiles ebook, which is a fully bespoke guide with law firm profiles to help save you in that research process. They also have a one-on-one -on -one e learning platform with coaches from international law firms which offer one-on-one -on -one sessions including interview coaching, mock interviews, CV reviews, cover letter reviews and so much more and of course I have discount codes for you guys so for the ebook products I have a code for 35% off and for the one-on-one -on -one e learning platform I have a code for 15% off which I will also leave in the description down below for you guys. Let's get back to answering some more of your questions. Another question that I've got is how did you make new friends and was it easy? Yes it was fairly easy but I think generally because everyone is in the exact same boat as you you just go into uni and talk to random people in the first few weeks of first year. I made friends with the people in my block that I lived in and then I ended up living with the people who lived in the flat two floors below me for second and third year and they're some of my best friends so that was great and I think I was really really lucky to live with people that I got on so well with and that we never really fell out about anything so I know that I was very lucky with that and then I also made friends just by sort of being introduced to people through my friends in so very sort of organic way I don't think I found it particularly difficult to make friends I had a few course mates from my seminars in first year and from the extracurricular roles that I did I had a couple of groups of friends from those as well. So the next question is about how to overcome exam stress. I think for me the main thing that made exams less stressful was in third year I think I knew exactly what work I had to do and just in general it was less stressful and I feel like I cared a lot less in third year like yeah I just really didn't feel as sort of like intense or like care as much but obviously I still really really wanted to do well. So I think that having a balance and during exam season just living life like normal, so like going out to see friends, going out on a night out, going to the gym, doing whatever you usually do, don't sort of like suspend your life when you're revising and when it's exam season, just carry on like normal and I think that was so so much better for my mental health and it removed the pressure and I would just study like it was a job and just making sure that exams don't consume your whole life when exam season comes around. So the next question is how was taking a language module in third year? If you don't already know we had a 30 credit optional module that we could take from any subject in third year and I decided to take beginner Spanish because I've always wanted to learn a language and I loved it, I really really enjoyed it. It was so nice to have a lot of contact hours and contact hours where you literally had to speak a lot to your tutor and the people in the class because obviously you're practicing your Spanish. I loved learning a language, I loved the new discipline of learning a completely different topic area, a new way of learning. It was just nice to have a completely different module alongside my degree. The next question is what are your future plans? I am starting the SQE in September, so very soon, and I will be joining my firm for my training contract which is a magic circle firm in 
August of 2023. And I've had so many questions about whether I'm doing a master's or not and my opinion on doing a master's and I'm actually contemplating it myself. I need to make a decision. I really, really want to do a master's but the way that it's structured with the city consortium program that I'm doing, I would have to do an additional 600 hours over 15 weeks, which overlaps the end of my SQE and the start of my training contract. And I believe 600 hours works out to be a full-time job if you divide it over 15 weeks. And obviously I'll be doing my SQE, which will be a full-time job. And then I'll be starting my actual full-time job. Sorry if you've moved, my SD card was full. But as I was saying, obviously I don't want to jeopardise my progress at my new job, but I desperately want to do a master's, but I just don't know if it's feasible. That's only a limited period of time, but then I'll also have my YouTube to be doing, which is at least sort of 20 hours a week, maybe more. So I just don't know if I actually have enough hours in the day to do it, but I really want to do it. But I will obviously keep you guys posted on that. I've got a couple about my areas of interest for my training contract, and I'm actually gonna keep a really, really open mind. I think we all sort of have events and talks about the different seats that we are able to sit in and I think I'm just going to keep a very open mind because I think we often surprise ourselves with what we enjoy and it's not necessarily the thing we think we're going to enjoy. Another question is do I feel prepared to take on law outside of law school and I think sort of as prepared as I can be. I think doing vacation schemes really helped. Seeing the type of work that I might be doing, getting to know the firms a little better, I think I feel as prepared as I can be. But obviously I know that there are gonna be a lot of challenges and I am gonna find it difficult. I have a couple of questions about what advice I would give to a future law student. So I think I would say if you're about to go into first year, it will be a little overwhelming. There are loads of new skills you need to learn and don't put pressure on yourself to know how to do them straight away and you will develop all of these skills and it will get easier. I would also say trusting yourself is really important. I think as you get through law school, you realise what work you do and don't need to do. Like personally, you learn when you need to be working, when you actually don't really need to be working, when you need to leave the house and go out and have fun or when you actually need to sit down and get on with some work. I think trusting yourself can play a huge part in that as well. I would also say enjoy yourself, live your life outside of law school. Law school isn't everything, it will be like your full-time job probably, depending on how many hours you work on it, but make sure you're enjoying yourself outside of law school. And I also think it isn't as bad as people make it out to be, like you see all these memes about like drinking loads of coffee and law students never sleeping and stuff, like it's really not that bad. And if you're not having fun straight away, that's also fine, like I struggled in my first year living in halls and with the degree a little bit. Final big question I'm gonna answer is, do I have any regrets? And I try not to live my life this way, but I don't think there's anything I would do differently. I think if I was pushed, one thing that I would probably do differently with uni in general is join a sports society from first year because I've seen people make such good friendship groups through sports societies and such strong memories through socials and sort of like end of season dinners and stuff like that. Saying that, I still went to my fair amount of socials, went to some end of season dinners and I still think I had just as much fun. And finally, I'm gonna round off with some quick fire questions before I finish the video. Three years of law school in three words, I would say challenge, growth and fun probably. The easiest and hardest module, I'm gonna have to go with third year because it's the most fresh in my mind, but international commercial litigation was by far the hardest for me. Didn't really feel like I knew what was going on. The easiest one for me was probably company law. It just clicked, I just felt like I understood it. I really enjoyed company law and like, I didn't find any of the concepts difficult to understand. But I know other people found company law difficult. So I think probably doing my back schemes actually really helped me understand company law better as well and just have more of like a real world understanding of the concepts we were learning as well I think and I also just find company law really interesting anyway. Final one is did you feel like law school was a short journey? In some ways yes it's absolutely flown by and I've loved it it's been such an amazing experience but in other ways no it feels like so long ago that I sat in my first lectures. It feels like a lifetime ago and I honestly feel like I've grown and changed so much. I feel like I'm a different person probably since I first started law school. That rounds us off very nicely. That is the end of all the questions that I'll be answering today. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Got into the end of the video, I am also writing an ebook about my experiences in law school and everything I've learned and all of the advice I'd impart and all of the things I'd wish I'd known. Essay skills, time management skills, all of that in depth in an ebook. And I will leave a link in the description so you can sign up for an email notification when that is released. But I will update you guys on here as well. But yes, thank you again to Mindful Learning for sponsoring part of the video and I will see you guys in the next one.